Today I'm welcoming Posey Roberts to the podcast as part of the 2017 GRL blog tour. Posey writes about the realistic struggles of men looking for love, whether her characters are family men, drag queens, or lonely men searching for connections, they all find a home in her stories. Her stories are character-driven and plotty, combined with various proportions of sweetness, kink, or angst, and far from predictable. Welcome, Posey. Thank you. I Thank should you say so welcome. Much. I should say welcome back because we we oh, did this on yeah. the blog tour last year. Right. Do you want to introduce your your friend who's with you this morning? Um, this is Olive. Um, our brand new puppy that we just got on Tuesday. So we've had her in our house. This is day three. And yeah, she was very content in my lap this morning. So and she's, I'm probably going to hand her off to my kid, though. So in a she, few she's completely adorable. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so give us an idea of... Uh, with your writing, how much time do you spend writing and, and what else do you work on in a day? Well, things have changed quite dramatically. I used to spend um, hours and hours every single day writing. Sometimes I would write up to eight hours a day, sometimes even a little bit more than that. Um, and in the last year or so, I've actually started writing less because my editing business has kind of taken off. And so I've been spending much more time doing that than I have been writing. Um, and I seem to spend more time plotting and planning than I do actually writing as of late. <laughs> and more time with social media or websites and things like that. So I want to get back to more writing. And if you're doing a if you're doing the plotting, at least you're laying the foundation for the writing to come. Yes, I am, and there's there's lots and lots that I have planned. I have uh, I bought even some book covers that for inspiration to keep me going. So <laughs> quite a bit going on. Nice. So hopefully we'll see some new stuff coming out coming out soon. Yes, I hope so. I do hope so because I have a third book in a trilogy that really needs to get going. So. And you write books that deal with, at, at times, heavy issues. You've explored cancer and PTSD and abuse survival. But then you swing to lighter fare also. What do you enjoy about having such a variety? I think it's it's really easy for me. Um, I was trained as a family therapist, so it's really easy for me to go to that, that deeper stuff. That's kind of naturally where I tend to go. But that's heavy, and it sticks with you for quite a while. And, um, you know, people talk about book hanger, hangovers. Mm -hmm. uh, try writing hangovers. I mean, I've seriously walked away at the end of some days, um, especially when I was writing about cancer and death and all that sort of stuff. And I was ex mentally exhausted, and I just needed a break. So I really love throwing in the, you know, lighthearted panty kink or whatever it might be. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's like it's like a cleansing like it just okay now we can have a little fun here and I really enjoy throwing in some like I wrote um, last year just for fun right before GRL I wrote uh, Stroke of Luck um, and that was there were some the one guy had uh, just had a fire but I wanted to do something more lighthearted and that was probably the most humorous that I've done despite the one best friend being a complete horrible person that she is. But <laughs> that was kind of fun actually writing about the struggle of friendship and secondary characters. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you tend to, do you think you gravitate towards one or the other or is, is the lighter stuff just good palate cleansing after a heavy one or the, the lighter stuff actually is harder for me to write. Um, like really tropey, I just I, I just write complicated plot lines, it seems like. I'm just pulled in with all of that. And, and part of this, I think, again, comes back to me being a family therapist. As a family therapist, I mean, we know that we, we, aren't, we don't ever grow up in isolation. Uh, I mean, family therapy is based on systems theory. One thing affects another thing, affects another thing, affects another thing. And I am very much uh, believe in how family of origin, not necessarily our birth family, but who we grew up with um, does affect how how we interact with other people today, whether we like it or not. Um, and so 
if you've been in an abusive family or you bounce from house to house to house to house, that's going to affect how you are today. I mean, if you've bounced from house to house, you're going to have some insecurity probably and have a hard time trusting people. So I have a, all of that, whether I'm writing it down on the page or not, it's always in my head. Mm -hmm. So that will always play in and there will be threads that I weave in and out no matter whether I want to or not. I mean, I have gone in, oh, I'm going to write this lighthearted nothingness. It's just going to be fun and playful. And next thing I know, uh, there's this horrendous backstory that I'm like, oh, my God, not again. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. as you're getting your story down and doing the writing, do you tend to be an author who interacts with other authors or do you just hang to yourself and go solo? Um, I'm more solo at this point. Um, I used to be. I started out actually in fan fiction, and um, there was a lot more interaction. Each chapter I would get done, and I would send it off to um, author friends or reader friends, and they would give me feedback, and then I would come back. But I've, I've actually found that I ended up changing major plot points because of that. So I started doing that less and less. Um, if I'm completely stuck on something, like I was um, uh, two years ago, I was really stuck on something, and I sent it out to some friends and said, I just, I don't know what to do here. I feel like it's dragging in, you know, act two. I don't know how to fix that. Um, but I, not so much anymore. I, back in fan fiction days, a friend and I actually, we wrote a story that's still out there um, that was chapter after chapter, and he would be writing in, um, what's the Google, Google Docs. Mm -hmm. And then I would be down on another chapter writing, and that was kind of fun. I do miss that. That was very inspiring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think that at some point you might collaborate again for something? or? Oh, I would love to if I found the right person. That's, sure. that's the thing. It's finding the right person that you, you have similar styles and that you gel with and you have the same working work ethics because I think that's the hardest part is I'm kind of a uh, when I start writing I'm kind of a workaholic and I'm like boom 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 let's get it done and then we'll fix it and a lot of people I've worked with in the past have been okay we write it now let's publish it and I'm like oh no 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 <laughs> no <Right. just> starting <laughs> that's your editor side coming out there too it really is and I I edit like crazy I I can go through some stories you know five up to five times and I'm I'm constantly tweaking when I start cutting more words I start cutting a lot of words actually that's when I know I'm close to being ready to send it off to my editor I like the editor has an editor, which of course is important. You can't really oh, edit yes. your own oh my God, I can't. I'm not going to add my own stuff. No way. <laughs> now you set your naked organic series out in Oregon, yeah, uh, in a commune in the in the Willamette Valley, but North Star Trilogy is in your home state of Minnesota. How did you end up so far from home for the Naked Organics series? Um, actually, I went to the Dream Spinner Author Conference um, out in Portland. Um, I already knew that the Pacific Northwest from previous visits was kind of one of those places that ah, it's like it called to my heart. And um, I loved Portland. And um, I don't know, there's there's a lot of people out, out in Oregon will we'll probably balk at this, but there's a lot of similarities between Minnesota and Oregon. We're kind of settled by the same the same people at least initially. Um, so I feel very, very comfortable out there. They talk about how kind everyone is in Oregon, or at least Portland. Um, and, you know, they joke about Minnesota nice. It just, it felt very much at home to me. Minnesota nice can be taken both ways, by the way. It can be <laughs> passive aggressive, but it is also, people always talk about how people will stop you on the street and do you need help? Do you need, you look like you're lost. Can I help you find where you need to go? And that was very much my experience out in Oregon as well. And I don't know. I also didn't want to deal with winter, like an extreme winter, like in Minnesota. Sure. It's a commune. I mean, it, it's, it's farming and they have 
they have to have income year round. It's a little harder in Minnesota when it's a hard frost and you can't do any. There's, I mean, farming can't do much except for greenhouses in the winter. So yeah, once that ground's yeah. frozen, you're kind of stuck till spring. Yeah, you are, or, or you have to do other things, crafts for six months. Because trust me, it's that long. <laughs> I grew up in Michigan. I know exactly what you're talking oh, about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, this last year, we actually got rain in January, which is unheard, oh, unheard of. But there was nowhere for it to go because the ground is frozen. So there was flooding. Mm, in the for, middle of January. Well, at least in my basement. <laughs> did you have to do extra research for something oh. so far from home? Or did oh, you do a lot of it while you were there? Did you get to take trips, perhaps? No, I didn't get to take a ton of trips, but no, I've done a ton of research. Um, Google Earth is my friend, let me tell you. Um, and it's it helped that I made a that I created a fake a fake commune and a fake community. I have not named names, so I don't have to really, you know, I just I know about where it is. Um, and I put a lake on it because I wanted to, sure. even though mostly rivers and streams in that area, but you know, author, I can create my world. So right. I'm going to do it. Um, but yeah, tons and tons of research. And I'm actually doing more research related to the farming stuff right now. It's all beekeeping. I actually considered um, going to the Southeast Minnesota Beekeepers Club that meets every month just down the road from me. So... <laughs> I bet that would be fun for you and maybe for them if they, if they knew you were researching for a book. Yeah, yeah. It really is interesting. I'm lear I've learned a lot, so. Now, I know you've brought a giveaway for our listeners. Uh, what have you got for them? Well, I would like to give away, um, it'll depend on who wins, though. So, um, I would like to give away the first uh, the first book of the Farm Fresh series, or excuse me, the Naked Organic series, which is the book Farm Fresh. If they already have it, I'm willing to give away a copy of any of the backlist stuff. Fantastic. So whatever they would like. That is awesome. So we will give we'll give our listeners a, a, a nice raffle copter to play with on the show notes page. Okay. And uh, we'll give away a book to some lucky person. Okay. Fantastic. Awesome. So what are you looking forward to about going to Denver this year for GRL? Um, Denver. <laughs> I haven't been in a while. It's been years and years. Um, <laughs> I maybe shouldn't say this with my kid in the house. Um, if there's a uh, head shop, I can go visit. Hmm. <laughs> Get a brownie or two. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Um. I, but really, it's it's getting together with friends, and I'm going to try to be – I'm always a little nervous with large groups, so I always, like, go through the lobby and avoid it. Um, I'm going to try to sit my butt down and interact a little bit more. I do better one-on-one -on -one with people than I do in groups, so come and talk to me. <laughs> Break the ice for me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll certainly talk to you while we're there, and yeah. for sure. And I'm sure other people now that you know they, they're seeing you here on the podcast and like, oh, there's Posey. Let's go talk to her. Yeah. It, well, and th it's nice to to kind of know that you're going to be seeing people ahead of time. Somebody suggested in the GRL group that we should on our badges, you know, have our Facebook or sticker, and I thought that was a good idea because so many of the people. I know their names. I, I can tell you exactly what their profile picture is, but that's, it's not them. It's usually right. you know, a picture of their dog or, or a book cover. Or or a book if it's cover. an author, it's a book cover. If it's a, if it's a reader, it could be <laughs> anything. Right. Right. And speaking of social media, what's the best way for folks to keep up with you on social media? Um, I probably do the most on Facebook. Um, all of my, all of my, um, <clears throat> the Posey Roberts, it's at Posey Roberts and P-O-S-Y, not P-O-S-E-Y, just to throw that out there because everybody wants to put an E in there. Um, but I'm Facebook, Instagram, I, I, that's more a little more personal, the 
Instagram. I'm going to post pictures of all of the dog. Sorry, I can't help it. And the hedgehog. We'll do Clover the hedgehog, too. And my kid. It just happens. Um, I do Twitter. I also have Tumblr, Pinterest, and a few other things, but I'm not on there very often. You are well connected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Posey, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us, and we look forward to seeing you in Denver in just a few weeks. Thank you. I can't believe it's, oh my gosh, it's so quick. We don't have much time. I better get ready. <laughs> The Big Gay Fiction Podcast is thrilled to once again partner with Gay Romlet as a featured blogger. You can see all the participating blogs and the full GRL blog tour schedule at gayromlet.com slash 2017 blog tour. Gay Romlet is an annual retreat that brings together the people who create and celebrate LGBT romance for a one-of-a-kind must-attend gathering of dynamic, informal, and diverse fun. Each year, the retreat travels to a new city and hosts tons of events from raucous parties to mellow tete-a-tetes while still maintaining a spirit of familiarity. GRL is the place to connect with old friends, find family you didn't know you had, and meet with both newly published and established authors in the gay romance genre. This year's retreat is set for October 19 through 22 in Denver, Colorado at the Denver Marriott Tech Center. For more information or to register, please visit gayromlit.com.